Hello everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim, where I'm going to check out the new scenery in London after World Update 17. World Update 17 improved upon the scenery in Britain and Ireland. There's undoubtedly many things outside of London that have been improved. However, I do have the Orbix London scenery as well. And so there are those London city buildings that Orbix adds. And right now that's still active. And I'm wondering whether it should be. You know, is it a good thing to have that active? Uh, is it still helpful or is it hindering the look? So I'm going to compare both versions with that active and with that not active and see how it goes. I decided to go with Gatwick because I wanted to see what kind of lag we get as we approach London. That way I can judge whether it's a little bit too, too heavy right now. We'll see. Uh, we're going at a fair clip, 200 knots indicated airspeed. I have an i5 12600K uh, RTX 4070. So, should be capable of dealing with it, but you know, if they improve the scenery of London to a great degree uh, with the photogrammetry, that can be quite taxing even on my system. So, this is the Flying Iron Sim Spitfire, the Mark 9. I should probably. Get some rudder trimmed in. Moderate bit of boost. Should be sustainable. So they say that the update includes 16 triangulated irregular network cities, 79 points of interest, and 5 handcrafted airports. So that's quite a lot. The cities in question, uh, Bristol, Brighton, Greater London, Heathrow, Leeds, Bradford, Liverpool, Newcastle, Sunderland, Welling, and Wembley. And then Cork, Dublin, and Cliffs of Moher, uh, slash Lisconor, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, in Ireland, Edinburgh, and Glasgow in Scotland, Cardiff in Wales, and Gibraltar, which is elsewhere. Uh, uh, the points of interest are uh, scattered. Uh, five in the Isle of Man, really, okay. Uh, and five handcrafted airports are Farnborough Airport, EGLF, London Stansted Airport, and Cork Airport, Sumberg Airport in Scotland, and Cardiff in Wales. Out of, out of those, the one I've probably visited most is Cork. And that's partly because of transatlantic flights. Okay, so here we have the Tower Bridge. I wonder if it, it looks like it might be excluding the Orbic scenery anyway. Uh, I don't know. It's really that tower bridge looks newish. Well, a little bit choppy here. Now I don't know London very well. I'm not a London native. My sister is. <laughs> My sister lives there, uh, but. I have never been there myself. So... All the more reason why I want a good version of it, so that I can see it like this at least. <laughs> okay, so I've got... So keep in mind, this is the Orbix scenery as well in theory. Oh, let's make sure Big Ben and Parliament. As we fly down here. And then I will remove the Orbic scenery and see what it looks like. But it seems like, well, I mean, I don't know how much they've improved in London, London, when they say Greater London. Definitely keep in mind this squiggly building. You'll see what happens to it after the Orbic scenery goes. I feel like that's a Orbic special right there. But performance-wise, it's not bad for me. So there's certainly no harm keeping everything together. At least going 200 knots, uh, or actually 240 now. If I was going faster, it'd be choppier. Of course, I have a great tolerance for low frame rate myself, uh, being that I've been playing various versions of Flight Sim since the early 90s. So. Not to date myself too much, 
but yeah in those days performance wasn't all that great <laughs> for, for a long time the performance wasn't all that great boy the egg really shines doesn't it So, by my standards, I mean, it's a little bit choppy, but it's mostly smooth. I would say, you know, it's landable. I could land a plane even though there are these hiccups. Uh, well, there's more hiccups over here, though. Just as I was complimenting it, it's gotten a little bit rougher. Maybe there's a lot of people at London City Airport checking out the scenery, right? Nope. Interesting. Again, on the finer points of accuracy, I can't judge, but it looks good, and considering how big, in, uh, big a city it is and how much scenery we've got, uh, it performs pretty well right now. And my guess is keeping the orbic scenery in is a good idea. But let's test that theory. I am now going to disable it. So, um, so they made Stansted look good, huh? <laughs> Not Gatwick, huh? I do have the B. John Hibashi tree pack, so if you notice more than necessary amounts of trees, that's why. And so here's this uh, business district. Now with the regular buildings, I would have to say that the Orbex versions are a little bit shinier, but these aren't bad. I don't think there's anything too interesting on this side. So we'll just go up the Thames. Uh, chopper eyes than mine might be able to see finer details. Though on the whole I already think that the Orbix London City Scenery or London Landmarks, I forget what the exact name of it is, adds a little bit more to it. This is in no way a sales pitch for that. I'm just trying to decide for myself whether I want want that stuff in or whether it's just gonna be a performance hit to no purpose. The tower bridge is looking the same, so I guess it was always that version. Tower of London. Mostly these guys are looking the same. Okay, London Eye and Big Ben and all. I think overall it's smoother. 
Although, you know, having done one flight around it, maybe that gave it a chance to cache some things. So not having the Orbix versions of the buildings that make things smoother. Now where was that squiggly building? Oh, over here. Well, yeah, I mean... Honestly, these versions are probably more accurate with all that stuff on top of the building. I feel like maybe that's an accurate rendition. Let me just take another look at that. I don't know what that building is, the curvy one, but it's distinctive enough to really give it a sort of analysis. In a way, the Ulrich scenery buildings are more crisp and lively. They're more colorful, uh, much more colorful, I think. But I don't know if they're an accurate representation of the way things actually look. They're meant to look stand outish. Is what I feel like. The way this scenery is, all the buildings tend to blend in, but in real life, the buildings do tend to stand out, right? I mean, when you see buildings in a city, they really, they really try to pop out at you. But yeah, frame rate wise, right now it's obviously smoother. So I don't know what you guys think. Should I keep the Orbix scenery activated? Bring all those buildings back? And in some cases, the stock buildings might replace it. They might have an exclusion for the, for the stock buildings. Or should I just uh, keep this? I didn't particularly notice that the buildings placed by the Orbic scenery got in the way of the other stuff in the city. It seems like everything else renders just fine. So, that's just a discreet look at London with the new update. I'd like to know what the London experts think of this. For me, it's nice to have a city in such great detail that I can fly around in, and it's this smooth at uh, 200 knots, of course. Maybe I should see how it is with a faster plane, but uh, the Spitfire just fits. I'll do some other touring uh, in Britain and Ireland later on, and I guess the Isle of Man as well, since they've got some stuff in the Isle of Man. But for now, with the Spitfire cruising down the Thames, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.